independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. It seems to be the objective. You know, here we sit today in this hearing with the ghost of Christmas past because the chairman of the committee has gone to the Speaker of the House and sought permission to open an impeachment inquiry. But she has said no. And so instead of opening the impeachment inquiry into Donald Trump, which is what the chairman wants to do and what I presume a majority of Democrats want to do, we're here reopening the impeachment inquiry potentially into Richard Nixon, sort of playing out our own version of that 70s show. And, and what I really regret it is, it is, is striking, Mr. you're Gates. here as a prop. You it are is. functionally here as a prop because they can't impeach President Trump because 70% of Democrats want something that 60% of Americans don't. Yeah, there you go. That was yesterday's giant, huge, rodeo clown circus that took place and a waste of our time and taxpayer dollars i will say i said it yesterday i'll say it again jimmy dean the sausage king would have been just as relevant as john dean yesterday a guy who went to jail who was an aide for nixon and they brought him up for whatever reason usually just to embarrass the president because right now there's a divide Pelosi's listening to the people. Nadler wants Trump gone. He wants impeachment. She's looking at 2020. He wants impeachment today. She's saying, if we do this now, and we screw up, not only are we going to lose in 2020, but the gains that we had in 2018 from the tsunami will disappear. And we'll be in serious trouble. Again, I have no idea. We have so many things that we need to be talking about. We have so many things that we need to be looking at right now. Immigration, health care, just to name a few, that need to get fixed, that need to be on put on a path of actually being dealt with in a way that we find viable solutions. Again, solutions do not mean perfection. There are trade-offs. You're not going to get everything you want. It's not going to make everybody happy. Instead, they roll out a guy who's like, well, ah, uh, uh, well, well, uh, when we impeached. Woodrow Wilson, it's, and I'm joking about his age, he's 80. But the reality is, is there was nothing there. It was, it was, it was just ridiculous. It really, really was. And I shake my head because there are other things that we need to be debating. And like, here's a perfect example. So today we're talking about what? The wall. So we've got the big thing, the wall, immigration, all of this stuff is going on right now. And, uh, you know, Kevin McClellan's talking. Any of our men and women on the border can tell you that DHS facilities are overflowing, that our resources are stretched thin with up to 50% of our Border Patrol agents in key sectors assigned to processing, transport, medical care, uh, and hospital watch, not securing our border. Not securing our border. Yeah, because they're doing everything but securing the border. Because they're no longer asked to secure the border. They're now asked to be everything from... And one of the things we talked about when I was in Yuma and I talked to uh, them, besides the fact they want the asylum law changed, besides the fact that they want at least, if we're not going to change the asylum law, make them the first point of contact when it comes to a fear-incredible danger interview. One of the other things they said is, hey, how about this? How about we hire more people to be inside filling all the paperwork out so we can get back out to do our stuff because the minute they take somebody in every one of those people that needs to be processed you're taking that person off the border and coyotes know this as do the drug dealers they understand and we're still debating the same thing kevin mckillian here is not saying anything that hasn't been said over and over again But when we have these hearings, it's not about coming to some sort of agreement, understanding of where we need to go. It's more about do we have a chance where we can get our five minutes of sound that sounds good, knowing in the end, whatever deal is done is done in the back. It'll be done quietly. They'll vote on it and get it pushed through. 
deals will be made where other things in the future that you may think could get done won't get done because the person that had to give something to get something had to give away that thing you may want. The zero tolerance policy it lasted six weeks. It was prosecuting adults who crossed with children. How many children were separated from adults in that six weeks? In that, in that six-week period, we can get you the exact number. I'll give you the number. It it's 2,880. That's what the judge found that, in right, Southern California. It's, you're right, Senator. That's the, the HHS filing. Yeah, 2,780. 144,000 people last month. What Trump and them did with the zero tolerance was not a fan. Was not a fan of. We can go over it again and again. But this is ridiculous. And we can go out there, and you got Dianne Feinstein. This is a perfect example of not getting something done. The IG concluded that immigrants are held in facilities that, and this is a quote, show a disregard for detainee health and safety, end quote. This is unacceptable. Yeah. They they weren't meant to have this many people. They weren't meant to house this many people. They weren't meant to do what they're doing. When you have an overflow, it's not meant for that. And that's where we are. But will anything come out of it? No. Why? Because it's about getting those little itty bitty sound bites. We need comprehensive reform. We need real reform. Is this deal with Mexico real reform? I don't know. Proof's in the pudding. And over time, it will bear itself out. We will see. But the reality is, is what we have right now isn't working. And if you're a Democrat and you can't see that this isn't working, that the laws that we have are being used against us because you're so blinded by the disdain you have for the person in the White House. That's ridiculous. Call it a crisis. Call it emergency. Call it an issue. Whatever it is, it's real. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show uh, is your uh, Twitter. You can tweet at us. So last night I watched uh, the basketball game. Uh, Very intriguing. Kevin Durant, a star player, comes back, uh, arguably one of the top three players in the NBA, depending on the night. You could argue he is the best player in basketball, definitely one of the top three players. You know, LeBron, him, and uh, Kawhi Leonard, uh, Steph Curry you throw around in there as well, James Harden, but that's it right there. Those guys are on a – they're otherworldly. The Greek freak who plays in Milwaukee, uh, that's it. I mean, there is is the the Mount Rushmore right now of players that are playing in the NBA – who are superstars. KD has a huge decision this summer. What am I going to do? Where am I going to go? I've taken less money to come here to win, and we've won. I've got a calf or some sort of injury. Haven't played in a month, but I'm going to come back. We're down 3-1. What a storybook ending this would be, knowing I'm probably going to leave the Warriors and probably head off to New York. And build my own legacy there, where it doesn't look like I'm shopping for titles, but I have made sacrifices, but I'm injured. So he comes back last night, and you could see it. Playing good, played 10 minutes, had 11 points in 10 minutes, and he decided, I'm going to take a guy on. He was just shooting, wasn't playing Big D or anything, he was just shooting the ball. Hadn't played in a month, hadn't really practiced, felt his team down 3-1, needed this, closeout game in Toronto, wanted to avoid that. And you could see it, and right away, boom, pop. There goes the Achilles, and it was, it was tough. The the GM afterwards, because we're talking about a guy who has an opportunity to go make two hundred twenty million dollars, which is a ton of money. Who's sacrificed here? And this is why when people get mad at athletes, you know, and like all the money they make. No, look, look, you have a finite time to make money. You have you have a talent that very few people on earth have. And you have a talent that even people who have your talent don't have the talent you have. Meaning, yeah, there are people that play with you, but you rise above them. And you could hear the GM last night who was just devastated. I don't think there's anybody to blame, but I get it. That stuff happens. 
I hope nobody does. I don't think it should land on anybody. But if you feel like you need to. It's you. That's who. It's you. Uh, Kevin had a, it's, it's an Achilles injury. I don't know uh, the extent of it. Yeah, it, it was ugly. Barkley this morning, who's always good for a soundbite, and kind of spit some truth in reality and very funny doing it. You've been asking these guys all morning if there's somebody to blame. Yes. Yes, there is somebody to blame. The Golden State Warriors for putting KD out there. Yep. I agree. Now, it's still, look, players will always want to play. And he goes on and says that. It doesn't matter. You get a head injury, you want to get back out there. You always want to play. You know your body, you think better than anything else. This is what I'm going to do. And teams always want to make sure that, hey, are you ready? Are you good? Are you good? And, and you know, now with head injuries, we, we, we're looking at things in a, in a totally different way. But with your body, it's weird, right? With your aches, your pains, you know, how much do you know your body really? What is the reality of it? There's a guy that's playing that's got a busted shoulder, and the doctors have basically told him, look, you can't damage it any more than it's already damaged. So he played last night, even though they didn't think he was going to come back. You know your body better than any anybody else. But, man, that cost him last night. It potentially cost him $190 million. Not that he's hurting. But still, when you've when you when you've taken less and you don't have Giselle Bunchen at home, a la Tom Brady, and you've sacrificed uh, your paycheck and you've got a finite time to make money, yeah, three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Hope you're doing well. Happy Tuesday. Blink. XT two cameras. They ask uh, people who break into homes. Right. So because if you're going to find like if you're building something, you want to know, OK, what's my competition? What I, I'm putting together this camera system and home security system that is going to be amazing. So why not go to the people that we're trying to protect it from? So that's what Blink did. They say, hey, how do you get into homes? And they're like, oh, it's simple. We, we you know, it's, it's the path of least resistance. We knock. And if somebody's there, we leave because we want least resistance. And they're like, OK. And that's when they came up with these X2, uh, XT2 cameras, which it's motion activated, right? So you see somebody, you have your Blink smartphone app, you may not even be home, and you can go, oh, who's this? You get, you get a little, like, uh, snippet of film sent right to you. And you're like, ooh. And there's a, there's a two-way talk back. So if it's the kids or somebody dropping off a package, they, hey, delivered their kids, go around, whatever it is. But if somebody you don't know, you say, look, get away from there. I'm going to call the police. What's your business? Go now, 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 now. It's amazing. So easy to set up. Wire free. Right? Easy. Two lithium batteries. Sets up in minutes. They'll run up to two years. Blink XT2 cameras start under 100 bucks. No contracts. No subscriptions. Totally affordable. Think about this. You could get them today. Order them today. Have them to your house by tomorrow or Thursday. Have them up. Lickety split. By the weekend, you are completely protected that's what's amazing thanks to blink home security just got easier visit blinkprotect.com slash benson blinkprotect.com slash benson blinkprotect.com slash benson blink cameras are available on amazon and at best buy blink is an amazon company and it works with alexa chad benson joe Deal this. Mueller, arrest me. Chad will trade you two perjury charges for one collusion and throw in a reduced charge of obstruction for free. Yeah, I'd do that. For just listening to The Chad Benson Show. Mexico is going to be doing a lot of buying, a lot of buying. Within a year and a half, I would say you'll be in the best position that you've been in in 15 years as farmers, and you deserve it. Trump right there today uh, battling, uh, well, battling concerts. That's what I'm calling, batting festivals. You've got Trump in Iowa. You've got Biden in Iowa. They're going at each other. We're going to have to hear whose crowd was bigger and more exciting and blah, 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 blah. I still feel that Uncle Joe's a little folksy, if you know what I mean. He doesn't, he's not, he's not bringing, it's more of a jazz performance, right? It's more of an intimate gathering where Trump is a festival. Like, you're going, you're getting, you're getting, you're putting it on when you go to Trump, right? Like, this is, are you getting a little bit of Rob Zombie? <laughs> right? A little bit of Twisted Sister? 
Oh, my goodness. Here's a good thing he brought up, though. He talked about this with farmers. Farmers have been hurt because of what's going on with China. CNN, everybody wants to point that out. Even today, Joe Biden talked about it. Iowa farmers have been crushed by his tariff war with China, and no one knows better than the folks in Iowa. But one thing that's not being talked about, that in this quote-unquote deal with Mexico, they've agreed to purchase more agriculture products from us, which is a big thing if it is what Trump and people are, are, are in his camp are saying is this is going to offset some of that hurt. It's not going to maybe make it whole for some, but it will definitely help others. So it'll be very interesting to see if that actually happens again. I don't care what anybody says. It could be the greatest deal in the world till I actually see it go into effect, till I actually see Mexico do what Mexico says they're going to do, and we do the things that we say we're going to do. I take everything with a grain of salt anymore with government. I do. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. I want to talk a bit about the Women's World Cup, which kicked off on Friday with the host France dispatching of, I don't even know who they played. But, it was like, but I want to talk about because I tweeted out something earlier. And uh, the reality is, is this today, the U.S. played their first game was not a good look for sports, for women's sports. It just wasn't. We're going to talk about that. We got more from Biden and Trump as they battle each other, calling each other's names, saying how each other are bad and evil, and blah, 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 blah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> how did we get here, people? It's a very fair question. How did we get here? Plus, T-Mobile, Sprint, they want to join forces. Hold on a second. That may affect minorities, huh? Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. I believe that the president is literally an existential threat to America. Well, I believe that children are the future, but you don't hear me squawking about it. Joe Biden today, they had a, uh, uh, they're just going back and forth with one another. That's what they do. This is, this is it, right? Trump, before he even got to Iowa, was going after Joe Biden. This is what they're going to be doing. He's coming, and he's realized, at least at this moment in time, there is one person on that side that is leading the race that I should pay attention to. Now, if Joe gets lapped and he falls off, he'll get made fun of, and then the next person up will take the insults, and away we go. But get ready for this for the for coming, uh, you know, weeks and months and, and year plus. This is a guy who does everything to separate and frighten people. It's about fear and loathing. It's about what he way he calls people, the names he Las calls Vegas. them. No president has done something like that, for God's sake. I mean, it's bizarre and it's damaging. Not out loud. Don't tell me no president goes in the other room. Whenever you watch or read any of those, you know, reading those biography books or watch any of those shows when somebody's since gone away and, and passed and they do something, they, they, they have a foul temper and they say some stuff. But no, we've never had a president that has been this vocal and said things like this on numerous occasions. Joe Biden thought that China was China. not a competitor of ours. Joe Biden is a dummy. Joe Biden thought China was not a competitor. We get it. We get it. We get it. Not a competitor. I'd rather run against, I think, Biden than anybody. Uh, I think he's the weakest mentally. And I like running against people that are weak mentally. I think Joe is the weakest up here. <laughs> it's just awful. That's why people like him, though. That's why his following 
right? I'm not just talking because there's a lot of people out there that aren't fans of him, but like him for the things that he talks about. And he actually follows through. They don't like all of the other stuff that goes with it. But there's another group out there that loves the fact that he is exactly who he is. His inner voice and outer voice. There is no. There is no like, hey, you better catch that before it gets out of your mouth. There's no, there's no reaction to that, right? There's none of that reaction. Just the way it goes. I think when you, when you talk to, to Trump supporters, they are not blind to his myriad flaws. But one thing they always say is he's not politically correct. I don't think you can uh, underest- overestimate how much people have been choking on political correctness and hate it. There were two studies about this recently. It was in the New York Times front page story few months ago. It was also in the Atlantic about a year ago. The vast majority of liberals in this country hate it. They, they think political correctness has gone way too far. No one likes to be living on eggshell. Yeah, they don't. And Trump has taken that and run with it. And there's a group of people that love the fact that he's done that. Now, can Biden overcome that? Because remember this, one thing Trump managed to do when he took down all 19 or 20 or 35 or God knows how many were in that cattle call to run for president, low those many years, it seems like forever ago, one thing he managed to do was to get out there and to brand people in such a way that their nicknames kind of became who they were. And that does matter, especially when we view people. How many of you out there, it's a perfect example, how many of you out there have had a friend or somebody you know that's acquaintance, and you're going to meet some other people, and that friend will start to tell you about these other people and give you their their all the things they want you to know about them. And they brand them in a certain way. And it may be totally different, but you've got a picture in your mind, well, this person's supposedly kind of a jerk. Or this, and a lot of times it's totally different. But you go in with this preconceived notion of this is who this person is. Trump's able to do that in a big way. Can Biden overcome that? Ultimately, for Joe Biden, where do you think it leaves him? Well, I think he'll get knocked down, yes, because it's early, it, always at this time. You know, the person who is known. And also, it, it, again, we don't know. I... I think America right now looks like our feet hurt and we want the old comfortable pair of shoes. You know, he is a return to normalcy. I don't think he's a lot of people's favorite, but he's a lot of people's second or third choice and he's good enough and he's going to get us back to the America we kind of remember where things happened in a normal way and we weren't full of anxiety and looking at our phones every morning like, what did the mental patient do now? But we look at our phones anyways. Trump has nothing to do with that. Right? It's a great article about the anxiety world that we live in right now. We're full of ang- the apocalypse anxiety where we believe that global warming, nuclear war, all of these things are coming. It's not if but when and it just can't be stopped. And we're living in this world. And yet we've never been safer. We've never been in a situation where we've been more advanced as a species. We've never lived longer with more abundance, but we have this thought of, oh, we live in this anxiety. And I think social media has a huge part to play in that, right? It has a huge part to play in our mental well-being, whether it's getting likes or views or looking at other people and the wonderful lives they're leading, which a lot of times is a complete BS facade, or whether it's reading about stuff and thinking that the whole world's coming to an end. Just too much pressure. It is. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. So I watched the U.S. women's soccer uh, game today. They played uh, Thailand. Uh, Great at massages. Horrible at soccer. Chad. I say that jokingly, but, you know, the U.S. women in women's sports, they want equality. They, 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 They want equality. I get that. I completely understand that. But when you have a product like what I saw today, it's hard to have a quality when you could take a J, you know, you could take a good JC college female soccer team, throw them out against Thailand and thump them. It was awful to watch. On the world stage, it was embarrassing. It was. And the problem with women's sports, and I'm going to say it, it's top-heavy, and no, it's not that top-heavy. 
It's you get three or four or five dominant teams and everybody else. And everybody else gets thumped. Everybody else gets smoked. It's not fun to watch. It's not. You could have put a baby in goal today for the U.S. uh, Literally, an infant in a car seat. That's how bad it was. On the biggest stage, supposedly, in your game. It was a joke. It was. Well, the men don't. The men The men have to face real competition. The women will face them. They're going to play Sweden. Hot. Uh, you know, there's some other teams. France is one of the favorites. And there'll be some real competition. But this is, like, you could literally have the Women's World Cup with, like, six or eight teams. A lot of the other ones are just, you know. And half of these women that are playing for other countries are or Americans or Canadians that happen to have a grandmother or grandfather that was from one of these countries, and do you want to play for us? I mean, it's, you know, I've saw it with, like, I've, I've seen it in the Olympics, right? You're like, you know, you're like watching the Italian ice hockey team play. It's over to Smith, over to Johnson. You're like, what? <laughs> like, where? Yeah, they speak no Italian. This was a joke, though. This was an absolute joke today. And I tweeted that out, what a joke this was, and this was not something. And, and the U.S. women, and here's the other thing. So the women game's going on, and in soccer, the goal difference will matter. How many goals you scored, how many you gave up, is going to absolutely matter. Absolutely matter. 110%. So they, we scored 13 goals. That would be the equivalent of a football game being... Hundred and ten to nothing. Like that's how bad it was on your biggest stage. That's how bad it was. It was. It was you could have put the entire Thailand soccer team out there, and it would not have mattered. And we had to run up the score because we're worried because Sweden's going to play them. And now Sweden has to go out and take on these Thai girls on Sunday. And now they have to go out and lay a 10 spot or a 12 spot on them. That's not a good look for your sport. It isn't. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Somebody just tweeted at Maybe you should watch more women's soccer. I'm watching women's soccer. Ah, Chad. What What am I watching? I'm watching an inferior product. There you go. That's the truth. I'm watching an inferior product made up of three or four teams, and every game minus a few is is going to be a blowout. I mean, th- there it is. It's like, uh, let me tell you who's going to be good in college basketball this year. Baylor, Connecticut, the same women's team that it's, you know, sta- you, you get three or four over and over again. And that's the problem, is it's completely... That's why tennis for women is the sport. If you're going to say, what sport would you watch for women's sports? It's tennis. Why? Because you have big upsets. You The, the, the player that's ranked number one and the player that's ranked number 80, that distance, that gap isn't there. It's not like that in other sports for women. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Track as well. What's a little women's track? They're fast. I was never fast. I just want to point that out. Never fast. So T-Mobile is going to try and merge with Sprint. And now there's a massive lawsuit to stop T-Mobile and Sprint from merging together. It's taking place in New York. There's 10 states now that are going after them to try and stop it for a myriad of reasons. This merger would severely impact many workers across our state and this nation. The proposed merger would re- result in the loss of thousands of jobs nationwide. I don't know how that is 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 going to happen. Again, yes, would that probably happen? Are we going to lose? Yes, when when companies merge, yeah, will there be job losses? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But what's the alternative? And we'll talk about that in a second. Here's something else. We won't allow New Yorkers or any Americans across the country to foot higher bills just so that T-Mobile and Sprint can make a larger profit. Right, because profit is evil. That's the new thing. Everybody needs to know that profit is evil. Here's something else. Yeah, it's going to be, you know, what their one of their big arguments is that you're going to go from four carriers down to three. 
Their big argument, T-Mobile and Sprint, is if we don't join forces and we can't combine to build 5G, you're going to go from four carriers to chances are three, one of them being really weak, the fourth one disappearing, and maybe down to two. Oh. Yeah. Now, when all else fails, throw this in. The T-Mobile and Sprint merger would not only cause irreparable harm to um, mobile subscribers nationwide by cutting access to affordable, reliable wireless service for millions of Americans, but would particularly affect lower income and minority communities here in New York and urban areas across the country. Ah, it's always got to be something like that. It's going to hurt minorities. No. Will it happen? I don't know. They've got to overcome some stuff. There's some questions that need to be answered. But everybody hears, you know, it's like, well, what if there's a monopoly? Monopolies aren't the worst thing in the world. United States Postal Service has a monopoly. They're the only ones that can deliver first class mail. That's a monopoly. It's a government monopoly. And there's other monopolies that have happened in the past that have been good for this country. Rockefeller, back in the day when we used to have kerosene lamps, was the only one that was pretty much doing kerosene. And he kept the prices so low that it wasn't worth anybody getting into it. T Mobile and. Sprint get together, do I think my bill is going to go up tomorrow by a a ton of money? No, I don't. Because they know that we got places to go. Let me tell you who's going to win this thing here. It's going to be who gets 5G first and how much of a difference that makes. And if if these guys really need to come together to make 5G and it doesn't happen, again, we may go from four to two. There's some questions that need to be answered, and I get that. But also, what's the big picture look like if it doesn't happen and they can't compete on the level with Verizon and uh, AT&T? 323 538 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. Love hearing from you. People are texting me about what a horrible person I am because I don't like women's sports. It's not that I don't like women's sports. I'm just trying to tell you guys, if you think 13 and nothing is a good look for your sport, A crushing like that, an embarrassment like that, you are wrong. It is not. On the highest, biggest, widest viewed place that you can have a game, that's not a good look. Candid is amazing. Your teeth, you want them to be shiny and bright and straight. As you get older, your teeth shift. Some people have gotten braces. Next thing you know, the braces are off. As they get older, teeth shift again. You're like, oh, what can you do? Candid is what you do. Candid has orthodontists who are licensed in your state. They're going to create a treatment plan for you. 3D preview is what you're going to get of what the final results are going to look like. And you're going to absolutely be amazed. Other companies use dental professionals. They don't. Candid use experienced orthodontist. You'll get your 3D preview. You approve it, and away you go. They're going to create custom clear aligners for you. They're going to be sent directly to you, so no hassle of having to go into the orthodontist office. And 65% less than braces. So you're going to save thousands of dollars, straighter, brighter teeth in less than six months. Get yours now. Check it out for yourself. Brighter teeth, shinier teeth, straighter teeth await you. Go to CandidCO.com slash Benson to save yourself $75 off and to learn more about it. Candid co.com slash Benson. Candico.com slash Benson. It's the Chad Benson Show. Deep states? Uh, no. Deep doo-doo? Yeah. The Chad Benson Show. The revelation that a 500-year-old painting was actually the work of Renaissance master Leonardo da Vinci came as a surprise, but the record setting $450 million it fetched at auction came as a real shock. And since that sale in 2017, the location of da Vinci's Salvatore Mundi has become largely unknown. Now, the blog Artnet.com claims the painting has taken up residence inside a luxury superyacht owned by the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman. And it's due to remain on board the yacht until Saudi Arabia can finish work on a planned cultural hub. i got to be honest with you. I don't know if I'm keeping $500 million floating around on a yacht. Anything can happen in the ocean. Doesn't this make a great movie? Bunch of idiots get together and go, I got a great idea. We're going to rob this yacht. It's got a painting on it worth a half a billion dollars. 
right there, there's plenty of flaws. And I'll tell you why. If you stole a half a billion dollar painting today, you know who you could sell it to? Nobody. <laughs> nobody. Nobody's going to get Nobody. Because anybody that would buy it's not going to give you a damn penny for it because they have no idea what it is. And you're not connected with somebody who may think about buying it. It's like too hot. But I will say this. Keeping it on a boat in the ocean floating around is interesting. And you say to yourself, like, what if? What if something happens? What if there's a fire? What if? Who knows what? Right? Who knows? What if somebody gets drunk, smashes into your boat? You just never know. And down goes your painting. You're not fixing that. You're not like, hey, Leonardo, can you paint me a new one? No, but DiCaprio could. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. I do love hearing from every single one of you. Check out the Instagram as well. Posted a gun smoke. Picture to love me some gun smoke. Still the greatest show on television. Period. Case closed. End of story. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. This is the guy who does everything to separate and frighten people. It's about fear and loathing. It's about what he, the way he calls people the names he calls them. No president has done something like that, for God's sake. I mean, it's bizarre. Have you ever and it's se- damaging. Yeah, have you ever seen Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas? Interesting movie. Interesting. Johnny Depp. Just a, just a tripper of a movie. I just want to say that. Joe Biden's an interesting character. I don't know where he's going to end up. I do know that we have a battle where he's going to, you know, uh, he's got to maneuver first through his group. But Trump understands that right now, at this point in time, he looks over there and realizes Biden's about all they have. So I got to have to come for Biden. That's it. Right now, that's what I'm going to do. Right. Well, they're, they're going to work on him in a different way. Right. They're going to work on him in a much different way because they're going to come after him for not being woke. They're going to come after him for all of these other things. So I'm going to have to come at him and start labeling and whichever one sticks with my crowd. Is the one we'll run with. Right. I heard Biden, uh, who's a loser. I mean, look, Joe never got more than one percent. Except Obama took him off the trash heap, and now it looks like he's failing. His crowd loves it. Other, like to me, I like I. You don't. I don't think you need to do it, but it works for him, right? It works for him. It does. I don't like it. I think it's beneath the office. But that's why people love Trump. That's why people love what he does that his his following there's a group of people out there that for trump it is his cult of personality all of that stuff it is he's just mm, they love it they love it that he says those things (sighs) not a fan i gotta be honest i'm not a fan 323-538-2423 at chad benson show is your twitter you can tweet at us earlier today john stewart uh Speaking to Congress about something that, you know, we're years removed from 9-11. That fund, the comp- uh, compensation fund, what is going on with that? What is happening with that fund? And he was very emotional today. And it was a very interesting thing to listen to him get up there and talk about the 9-11 fund. And he was, uh, I mean, he laid it out there. These men and women... And their response to it is what brought our country back. It's what gave a reeling nation 
a solid foundation to stand back upon, to remind us of why this country is great, of why this country is worth fighting for. And you are ignoring them. Yeah, he was uh, he was pissed. And rightly so. Right. We have these great ideas and then we get doing stuff and then it gets ignored. But welcome to the world of politics, 9-11 or otherwise. It's politics behind me. A filled room of 9-11 first responders and in front of me. A nearly empty Congress. Sick and dying, they brought themselves down here to speak to no one. Yeah. Well, because they're too busy doing other things, like making sure that they got all the things they need to go after Trump, right? To be there, There's nothing sexy about this. And that's the sad thing is, uh, you, like I talked earlier to Congressman Swikert, and it, there's – Things that people will pay attention to, and there's things that's not. And you go for the, you you know, you aim small, you miss small, you aim big, you hit big. If this was something that was sexy, they'd be tripping over themselves to get to it. But it's not. It's not immigration. It's not the battle of Trump. It's not any, I mean, yesterday we had politicians talking to a guy who was on the who was an aide for Nixon, John Teen, who went to jail, who was part of the entire scandal of Watergate, and that place was packed out. 9-11 first responders in their funds. Who's there? I saw some people sitting behind him, and it was heartbreaking to look at them and the struggles that they're going through. But it's not sexy. And in politics, it's about being Where's the camera? Because it's about keeping your fiefdom. You can't be there for everything. But there are some things that, you know what, you should be there for. You could take some time out. Doesn't have to be everybody. People realize that. But today, he might as well have been speaking to himself. I would be so angry at the latest injustice that's done to these men and women. And, uh, you know, another business card thrown our way. Uh, as a way of of shooing us away, like children trick-or-treating, rather than the heroes that they are and will always be. Man, he was was upset. Rightly so. Rightly so. And you can't be there for everything. You can't. Everybody knows that. There's a lot going on. You have other meetings. You have committees, the whole nine yards. There's a lot of times you got a lot of stuff where you're just sitting around going, I'm going to go get something to eat. Want to go work out? Want to go, you know, I mean, there's even the president has, I think it was Obama said, I was, uh, I was surprised about how much time you have a lot of free time. And you're like, well, what do I do now? Kind of things like movies. Right? Hurry up and wait. But it was like a mausoleum in there, literally. The idea that you can only give them five more years of the VCF because you're not quite sure what's going to happen five years from now. Well, I can tell you, I'm pretty sure what's going to happen five years from now. More of these men and women are going to get sick and they are going to die. And the reason people paid attention to this today wasn't for the 9-11 people. It was because John Stewart was there. And with him, he commands some media that will follow him. And he was impassioned. So people, some people will pay attention to it. Not a lot, but some. Because it's not Russia. It's... Not the latest subpoena in something else. Oh, did you hear? We subpoenaed this. We did that. It, 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 it's not, you know, the likes of, of you know, Pelosi saying, I'm just ignoring him and every time. It's not that. But because of him being there, he has enough cachet in the media world that people will follow him. But whether or not it results in anything, we'll see. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at me. Love hearing from every single one of you. All right, here's a question: Why are we afraid of the boob? It was a question. It's a fair question. Woman gets kicked out, and I and, and I posed this question earlier to some people. She's feeding her child, ten month old, 
right, feeding her child at a place that she's allowed to be because it's a public pool. Why do we have this fear of breastfeeding in this country? I would love somebody to answer that. And and I and I said I think I said it earlier is I think it is because we have to uh, we have to explain something to our kids that we're uncomfortable explaining things to. Right. Which is weird because it's natural. Kid goes, what are they doing? Well, you did the same thing. It's how they, you know, it's, it's you breastfed. She produces milk. It's the most natural thing on earth. But we have this bizarre fear of, like, nudity. And I was telling producer Phil, I've seen so many of these in the last several years where people go and complain, why this person should be doing this, this person. And rarely is it a guy. <laughs> Mostly it's a, it's another woman, and I don't get what people are afraid of. I just, I, I, I don't get it. So you had a woman in Texas at a public pool, very modestly, under her, like, her, her, her little, she had like a shawl or something, under that, she's feeding her child, and somebody comes and you need to leave. You can't do that here. And I and like with Nipplegate, I still don't get Nipplegate. To this day, I have never, ever gotten Nipplegate. To this day, I have never gotten why that was such a big deal. I don't know what's going to happen if somebody sees a nipple or a boob. I'm not quite sure why we have this bizarre fear of, of, of nudity. And I, I don't know what it is. <laughs> It's just, it is, it's bizarre. It's like, what are you afraid of? Well, you know, things. Like, what things? You know, stuff. No, I don't. You have to explain it to your kids. Are you afraid to talk to them? That's what I think it is for a lot of people. I think they're just afraid to talk to them. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show. Is your Twitter? You can tweet at us. Uh, check us on the Instagram as well, because we got the gram, kids. We do that. We got the gram. Now, do you go to sleep at night with the lights on? That's not a good thing. According to new research done on about 43,000 women between the ages of 35 and 74, those who slept with the light on are 17 percent more likely to have gained 11 pounds or more during a six-year period compared to those who slept in darkness. The study only looked at TV, lamps, and outside light, not phones, tablets, or computers. And it should be noted that this is only an association, not causality. Other factors like unhealthy eating and a lack of exercise could lead to trouble sleeping and possibly lead to falling asleep with the TV on. So it's tough to say which is causing the weight gain. Yeah, and when you don't sleep well, the next day, what happens? You're dragging. Your body needs energy. It needs fuel. You reach for something, and that's how it starts to happen. And inch by inch and pound by pound, it goes on. Lights, though. Man, I lo- I, got, I have dark out curtains. I, I love that. I love dark out curtains. I need it to be pitch black. Turn my phone over. Like last night I had my phone, rarely I have my, my ringer ever on because I'm always around microphones and I have it on because Jack wasn't feeling good and uh, his mom was debating taking him to urgent care. So I was, but outside of that, turn my phone over and I don't, you know, I watch a little TV before I fall asleep, but man, I don't know how some people, they, they have all that stuff on. Oof, crazy, crazy. Three, two, three, five, three, eight, 24, 23 at Chad Benson show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. You're listening to. John Stewart there talk about the first responders. Uh, I'm working with a company called Wounded Paw, partnered with them, and they're amazing. Uh, they were started by a guy who was wounded in the Middle East, fighting for our country, and struggled, and was then paired up with a dog who helped him overcome so many things that he says, you know, we need to do this for more people. And he's put together a company that is out there helping Unite our furry best friends, as he says, with our nation's heroes. But the thing he does is so much different is they go out and rescue dogs that are about ready to be put to sleep, euthanized. Train them to be service dogs and then get them to first responders, their families and veterans. 20 veterans a day we lose to suicide. They need your help, though. So if you have a car, an RV, a truck, even a boat, and you're like, I don't know what to do with it. It's in storage. 
I might sell it, I might not, whatever it is, donate it. You're going to get a tax-deductible gift, and what it's going to do is it's going to save a paw, as they say, and save a life. They're an amazing organization. I urge you to check them out. They're called WoundedPaw.org, WoundedPaw.org. They even take cash gifts as well, and again, it's all tax-deductible, or you can call them on the phone, 844-678-4PAW. That's 844-678-4729, or WoundedPaw.org. It's the Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show, where we reach across the aisle and occasionally poke someone in the eye. I criticize the, uh, you can't criticize anymore. I criticize the Women's World Cup. Not the, criti- look, we won today 13 to nothing. I want us to win. I'm a big proponent in the United States of America and us winning. And we will play much tougher opponents in the coming weeks. Right? Right? But today was a joke. 13 to nothing on the biggest stage that you have is not a good look for women's sports. It isn't. 30 years, two or three years ago, a movie came out called Eddie the Eagle. The guy who plays Elton John in the Taron Egerton, uh, he, he played Eddie the Eagle. Eddie the Eagle was a guy who was basically a nerd, never had anything in his life, was just this... He was, he, he was, for all intents and purposes, overlooked, right? And he had a dream of going to the Olympics. Had no talent whatsoever. So he took up ski jumping, and he was awful. And everybody made him, oh, it was, you know, it was so funny. They made a movie about him because he got there, and he just barely qualified. Several years ago, right, a Nigerian or a Kenyan tried to do ski jumping, and they, they led him into the Olympics, and then they said, no, you can't do this. You're not going to. He's like up at the top. you know. He's like, no. They're like, we're not going to let you go. You're going to die. Today was one of those things where this is your big, giant stage. You can't have that. You can't have 13 to nothing. It's embarrassing. And the U.S. team kept pouring on. At some point in time, I would have said, you know what? Why don't we just turn around and knock the ball around for 10 minutes, and let's get out of here. We don't need to put on 13 goals on these girls. We just don't. Right? You don't have to make it so you look like you're killing the game. You can make it somewhat competitive, but at the same time, you can, you know. Yeah. It was was not a good look. It was not. People are mad. Well, maybe you. I'm like, ugh. You should watch more women's sports. No. I'm watching the Women's World Cup because I want us to do well. But... I'm not going to watch. I'll watch when we play outside of that. I'm not going to watch anything else because I don't care because it compared to the men. It's just sorry. <gasps> You're a jerk. Three, two, three, five, three, eight, twenty four, twenty three at Chad Benson show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. Do love hearing from every singer one of you, <laughs> even if you don't like me. Still last night listening to the GM of the. Warriors upset about Kevin Durant blowing out his Achilles, and that's pretty much what it is. The MRIs today, they're not saying, but they're saying. Uh, Kevin had a, it's, it's an Achilles injury. I don't know uh, the extent of it. Uh, bad. Achilles, are, that's not easy. You blow your Achilles out, you, and if you're, if you're an average person, you'll have surgery and you'll be back you know, doing your stuff, but you'll have to do some rehab. For a world-class athlete, he's out a year. And it's probably a year and a half to two years before he's back, if he's ever back to where he was. He had $220 million reasons not to play last night, but he tried to help his team out. Maybe it helped him psychologically, but did it hurt him? 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. It's the Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. 
You vote for this guy who's going to be the little man's champion. He gives all the money to the rich people. You you have this idea that your your path to the American dream is is blocked by immigrants and single mothers on food stamps. That's who has all the money. And that he was going to beat people up that you don't like. Right. I mean, he is a blustery guy. I mean, I've always said this. People vote not on issues, especially anymore. They vote on weakness or strength, what they perceive it. Well, I don't know about that. But the weakness or strength thing is very real, right? If you have a politician that's good looking, right? So you have Gavin Newsom, for example, who is looks like Christian Bale. He's the governor of California, California, standing up next to somebody who is five foot nothing, right? Maybe overweight, little disheveled looking, right? Or Bernie Sanders, for example. People are going to look to somebody like Gavin Newsom as that guy, he's, he's got it going on, right? He's got it going on. He could be a buffoon. But the thought process is he's stronger. Who am I following out of a building? Am I following that guy out of a building or am I following that guy out of a building? And yeah, you know what? He does that. And I've been trying to explain this to, to, to my friends who are progressive and who are on the left. They'll ask me, why do people vote against their best interest? Why do people vote, you know, for Trump when they see all these things they can't stand? You know, they they, they themselves can't stand it. And I say the biggest thing is, and you guys got to understand this. If you want to beat him, you better understand it. He feels like their equalizer, right? He's their Denzel Washington. Great movie. He's getting equal. It's not about the, well, do the, do the rich make more money? This day? They, you know what? The average person doesn't sit around all day going, ah, the rich people. You know, they, they make that a big photo op. But the reality is, and a big talking point, uh, he gives them voice. He looks at the people who they already think look down on them. Right? That middle country, slower life. You don't have a museum. There isn't a play every night, you know. In your, in your town, right? he looks at them and says, I got your back. And he'll go look at those other people and say, you guys suck. You treat them like crap. They know that you're elitist. You look down upon them. He's their great equalizer. He is. And he understands that. As long as Donald Trump is president, I am down the line, Democrat. But you go uh, after, after them. But I, I think exactly, your I go after them right. because they need going after. They need some tough love, and I'm not going to stop. But yes, their stuff is raggedy too. They have some things they have to answer for, and they're, they don't help themselves mm-hmm. a lot. And I think a lot of this um, far left political correctness is a cancer on progressivism. Yeah. Another thing they love about Trump, he doesn't care. He doesn't. He just, he's going to say it. That's why I said earlier, where's the person on the left that also doesn't care? I mean, my God, everybody got excited about Beto. I thought, Beto, you know what? He's got the charisma that a lot of the other ones don't have. And it started with him apologizing, and it has not stopped with him apologizing. And the more he apologizes, the further he gets away from being relevant. He's at the point now where he slid off your paper and he's now on the floor. His name is. They want strength. They want somebody who 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 has that look, who has that strength about them, who has that. So I look at Kamala Harris. But Kamala Harris right now, I look at Kamala Harris, whether you like her or not, I look at her and say she could be a damn good, formidable candidate. But she's now apologizing for being great at her job as a prosecutor. Doesn't work. Do you think Trump, would, if he was a great prosecutor, because you know he'd be the greatest, right? I'll tell you that. Do you think he would apologize for being great? No, he wouldn't. He would not. I think when you when you talk to, to Trump supporters, they are not blind to his myriad flaws. But one thing they always say is he's not politically correct. I don't think you can... Uh, 
underestimate, overestimate how much people have been choking on political correctness and hate it. There were two studies about this recently. It was in the New York Times front page story a few months ago. It was also in the Atlantic about a year ago. The vast majority of liberals in this country hate it. They, they think political correctness has gone way too far. No one likes to be living on eggshell. Yeah. And it's backfired on them. And now with identity politics and all of these kind of things, it's not going to help them going forward. It isn't. And I tell and I tell my friends this all the time. I have a couple of good friends who are super progressive, cannot stand Trump. By the way, they don't think Trump should be impeached either. Uh, they couldn't stand Hillary. But they, I tell them all the time, the difference between Trump and other people is he plays to win. He plays to win. He's going to leave everything out there. He plays to win. They're playing not to lose and not to 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 hurt anybody's feelings and not to leave any group behind. You can't win that way. Try to make everybody happy. You'll find out you make nobody happy. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. Love hearing from you. So I found this to be interesting. So a woman. Right? Because this would be a woman thing. Well, I don't... Is it really a woman thing anymore? I don't even know if it's a woman thing anymore. Is that the right thing to say? Maybe not. She gets kicked out of a public pool for what? It's not the kind of police body cam video that often makes the news. I have a right to feed my baby. They feed him in church, school, and... When Misty Dojero's 10-month-old son got hungry, she decided to nurse him. That's when a manager of the pool approached. She said, you need to cover up or leave. After the police were called, she did leave. Word spread and other nursing mothers showed up at that city pool. We all just kind of got together and decided to go for it. The protest apparently worked. Texas city officials, realizing that state law allows women to breastfeed wherever they need to, have apologized to Misty Dojero. Yeah, as they should. What is this weirdness? Of people who breastfeed, right? What 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 are you afraid of that's going to happen? What exactly is going to take place? That you're going to see somebody's breast? Oh my God, there's a boob. That your child's going to see somebody's breast? I'm just trying to figure out what about this scares people because we hear about this all the time. We hear about this so much that 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 oh you should there's times and places. No, nah, come on, come on. It's the most natural thing in the world. She didn't take off all of her clothes and slap a, you know, a 22-year-old. Like, come on. It's a child. What exactly are you afraid of? It's like the whole thing. I still look back on Nipplegate with you know Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake and the insanity of the way that we were for the, co- for the few weeks afterwards as if something, somebody saw something that was going to destroy their world. She gave me the ultimatum, and I said, well, you show me your policy where it says that I need to cover up, and I'll leave. And um, and she, you know, was telling me that it was, you know, not right that I needed to cover up. It's her policy. But that's not, the, 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 what it says in Texas is, essentially, if if the mother has a right to be there. So if you have a right to be there, it's a public place, whatever it is, you have a right to be there, you're allowed to feed your child, Right. She covered up, she, you, know, you know, normally when I see, I've seen women who are breastfeeding, what do they do? They have a towel over them, they have something like that. It's just we lose our mind with like, oh my God, there's a boob. What is wrong with you? What do you think's going to happen? I'm just curious. You think your child's going to see something? You're gonna, here's the problem is you think your child's going to see something and then you're going to have to have a conversation with your child and explain to them things. Is that it? Good God, this, this fear of, well, did you know that uh, there's, a, there's a boob over there? <laughs> what? What? I've been on airplanes. I've been all over the place, and I see people how uncomfortable they get, and I just laugh, and I'm like, so weird, right? I mean, it's weird because I'm breastfeeding somebody, but still, Chad, you're so weird. It's just, a, it's just an odd thing that we have this, you know, weird kind of fascination and 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 freak outness over a little bit of nudity. 323 538 2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. Four day work week. Who's uh, who's up for it?
It may sound outlandish, but the idea of a four-day work week is gaining ground in many rich countries. Take the UK, where work hours have been creeping up in recent years. Here's the head of Britain's National Federation of Unions, Francis O'Grady, at a recent conference. I believe that in this century, we can win a four-day working week with decent pay for everyone. Yeah. You know, if you are you working ten hours a day? Is that how that works? I mean, a lot of nurses and 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 cops and everybody else they have their three days and four day work weeks, uh, but they're talking about everybody, a four day work week. John Maynard Keynes predicted that technology would make us so efficient his grandchildren's generation would only clock in fifteen hours a week. That was clearly an overshot. But the British economist Robert Skidelsky told Bloomberg that judging by historical trends. People should be working an average of 33 hours per week today. 2014 Gallup poll showed full-time workers in the U.S. work even more hours each week. Yeah, yeah, we're working a lot. And we're taking, by the way, very little vacation. Like, very little vacation comparatively to the rest of the globe. Like, Spain has 40, pretty much 40 days off a year. You get 40 days off a year. On average, I think in the European Union, you have to have 20 days off. That doesn't include holidays. It's just paid vacation days, according to the European Union. We're working longer and harder, right? And we don't, and here's the other thing, though. And it was very interesting. I was watching this uh, story on, I think it was Yahoo Finance, and this guy's like, look, I worked at a place where we had unlimited vacation. So you could take vacation whenever you want. And he's like, I took less vacation that year than I've ever taken in my life. And a lot of us don't take vacation because we have the fear that we're not going to be needed. Our job's going to be given away. What am I? I'm going to come back to a giant mess. Uh, a lot of things play into that, right? We don't. We, and and that's just us, right? Because we we you know we look at everything as a competition. Is there somebody in this office, right? That's going to be better than me? Is there somebody in this office? I, or I've got them believing that I'm an integral part of work, and if I leave. They're going to find out that the wheel still moves and it goes round and round and they're not going to need me. And there's a lot to that. And some people, they just don't take it and they save up their vacation and they're in positions where they're allowed to keep that money at the end of the year. Not all places, but some. The New Zealand-based estate management company Perpetual Guardian piloted four-day work weeks last year. Employees had to adjust. They shortened meetings. To increase efficiency, they had to cut back on browsing the Internet. The company claimed that workers were as productive in four days as they used to be in five, and they were more engaged and less stressed. Yeah. Oh, I believe that to be true. Because if you think about how much work... So here's it, how many of you are sitting here today? You're listening to me, whatever it is. You're going to meetings that you don't need to be in. You are doing things throughout the day that you know, okay, I'm going to get this done, and I'm going to have X amount of time for all intents and purposes that are going to be free. I'm going to be hunting for other things to do that may not even be my things to do, but I can get this done in five hours, but they're going to make me stay here eight hours. A lot of it is, that's the reality. It doesn't work everywhere, right? It doesn't work everywhere. But I'm always open for it. I always, you know what, I, if, and that's going to be the big thing going forward is, and, and this is some of the things that are unwritten rules in, in the world that of, of how we're, when you're going now, a company may say, hey, we can't afford you to pay you more money than you want hourly right now. But what we can do is we can offer you off every other Friday. We can give you a half day, you know, on on what a, we can do some things like that and that's what people are going to be doing. And that's the way they're negotiating. It's it's more quality at times and even quantity of pay. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us the Chad Benson show. Running with scissors sounds great compared to this. Say woo! 
The Lion Country Safari is mourning the loss of two giraffes after both were struck by lightning in May. The pathology report finalized Tuesday confirmed lightning killed them instantly. The West Palm Beach, Florida drive through park says 10-year-old Lily and 1-year-old Gioni were found by keepers after the fast-moving storm swept through. The two giraffes were part of a larger herd that are not kept to pens or covered pastures in the park and instead roam free and open space. Ah. <sighs> Producer Phil, will you remind everybody what will happen in nature? Nature will what? <clears throat> nature will mess you up. Mess you up. That also includes nature messing up nature. And that was just something that happened. Can't believe that Gianni was killed. Why? Because uh, he's 28 feet tall. <laughs> I told him once, if I told him a thousand times, take that hat off. You electrocute like yourself. That's not very nice, Chad. I'm just saying. Speaking of nature, oh, man. Sh- sh- shark. I was, like, paddling in a little bit because I just rode one, and my friend was right next to me. And then, like, I just felt something, like, grab onto my leg. And, like, I was like, oh, my gosh. So I, like, instantly, like, yanked it out. Based on your speech pattern, uh, yeah, like... Awesome, dude, bro. Like, man, something just totally grabbed me. Like, what kind of fish was it, bro? I don't know. Like, fish, fish, bro. It's a shark. I asked him to look at it, and he said, he said, yeah, it's pretty bad. And I was like, and I looked at it, and there's blood everywhere. Yeah, man. Austin Reed, dude, got attacked really close to where the other girl got attacked a couple weeks ago. It totally sucks. I just laid down, and they took a bunch of towels and started, like, putting pressure on my leg to stop the bleeding. 40 bull sharks were spotted not too far from there today in uh, in the Carolinas in down to Florida. There's a ton of them there. People are like, how do you avoid shark attacks? Well, you're going to go in the ocean. There's always the potential that nature will mess you up, but the chances of that happening are slim to none, like getting struck by lightning unless you're like 18 feet tall, right? Probably a better chance than if you're not. In saying that, they'll tell you, don't swim in the early morning. Right When the sun's just coming up, the water's a bit murky, and do not swim at dusk. It's when they tend to feed. So there you go. Because nature will mess you up, kids. I'm just letting you guys know. Nature will mess you up. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us, Trump today, talking, bragging about his, uh, his amazing agreement with Mexico. This is one page of... A very long and very good agreement for both Mexico and the United States. Well, what's in that page? I'm just curious. What do you get? He he holds up this thing. Like, who knows what's in it, right? It could be one page. I like a simple page, right? I like it. It's interesting. But then, like, watching some of the other talking head shows today, just flipping around, you know, I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to watch the women's national team game. And and just they, they would like. The camera would zoom in on, like, trying to figure out, what is it? What? What is it? What? What is that one page that he's got there, this agreement? Who knows what it is? Probably nothing, but he trolled you, so you follow it. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. We've got the chadshow.com. Grab your podcast. You can go there as well tweeted out something earlier about the women's national team played soccer they open up their uh world cup today in uh fine fashion if you will 13 to nothing over thailand in the women's uh, soccer world cup and i just said that this was not a good look for 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 the world cup itself on the biggest stage got a lot of blowback and i said it's not about the women's national team this is about the game itself not the game that was played or the girls that are playing <sighs> people chad benson show This is The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. How would you describe the state of play going on in our political culture today? Well, not, not good. First of all, we, we can't even uh, agree on a set of facts. You know, if you can't agree on the facts, how can you come up with a solution? I don't think we ever had it that bad. And it's tit for tat. And 
I go back and forth on impeachment because I feel like, yeah, it's the right thing to do. But if they impeach Trump, whoever the next Democrat is, you know they will impeach him. Yeah, because that's it's tit for tat. People get that. That's Bill Maher. Last night he was on with Chris Cuomo. Uh, and I thought some of the stuff he said was very, very interesting. Some of it's the usual line. You know, see, it doesn't matter. You're going to bring somebody on your show. You're going to get the usual stuff. But I, I think he said some stuff that was very, very interesting. And it is tit for tat. It's the world we live in now. This is politics has gotten to the point where we're so ridiculously tribal. And there's a great article in the New York Times about how tribal we are that states now have become one-party systems in certain areas, and the states are becoming tribal. And that's where we're moving. And I think that's what we're going to be doing in the future, right? If you're conservative, you're going to find a a middle-of-the-country, low-taxes, low-regulation state that's going to share your values. If you're more liberal, you're probably going to head to the coast. uh, And there's going to be these pockets of some purple areas. But I think we're going to find more and more of us trying to find our tribe and flock to the, to what makes us comfortable, which is sad, but I think that's the reality of the world that we're, that we're in. But Bill Maher was very honest last night, was asked about winning. Do you think he's winning? Yes, and I'm sick of winning. He's right. I got sick of winning, his winning. But we'll see. You know, I mean, a, a lot of the recent polls show, it's funny, in, in a great economy, mm-hmm. but not great for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. You have to remember that. But that's narrative. Yeah. Yes, it's low unemployment, but what kind of jobs do people have? How secure are they? Can what they about still, underemployment? Can, yeah, can they get health care? Temp workers, they, less hours, right. less money. You know what's funny is I was listening to that, and the entire time that Obama, when he was bringing back jobs, people talk about all the jobs and his unemployment numbers. First of all, we all know unemployment numbers are a joke, right? So, yeah, it's 3.9, maybe it's 6.5% underemployment the whole nine yards. The right brought that up. Never once did anybody at CNN ever bring up what kind of jobs are coming back compared to what kind of jobs we lost. It was an underemployment. They never brought that back. It it is funny. And Bill Moore hammers a bit of the media, too, about how he doesn't trust the media because of the fact that they've got a, you know, they're they're in a world now where they answer the corporate boardroom. Because the the media, in particular the news world, has gotten to the point where it is truly a business now. And it's an entertainment business first and foremost. And you've got to have eyes on that entertainment industry uh, business to make money, right? Because they're not doing it for free, right? Long gone are the days that they're doing it for virtually nothing. Oh, they're not getting paid a lot in certain small newsrooms across the country, right? But they realize now you got to choose a side, and it's entertainment, and you're answering to the boardroom. And he said, that's why I didn't trust the media, right? Because, uh, well, and, and because we, again, consume in such a different way our media. We're going to find what we want, how we like it. What we want reaffirmed, and we're going to go there. Whether it's, you know, One American News or Fox or Huffington Post, New York Times, CNN, MSNBC, whatever it is, we're going to head there. But you have to have profit, right? Because you have to have people there. I mean, every day, all you have to do is open up uh, just, you know, any other news. Like Drudge is what they call an aggregator, which is it puts a bunch of headlines on, but they're not Drudge. they're, They're not Drudge stories. You just click on them and go there, right? But you can just go there and see how bad the media industry is struggling, in particular the print industry. So you got to figure out how you're going to do it. And so you make it entertainment. And with entertainment, you better start making a profit. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. He's sick of winning. Trump is winning. Trump is controlling the narrative. Trump is doing what Trump has always done since he got into this race. He pushes the buttons. He pushes the narratives. He plays the game as good as anybody who's ever played the game. He's rewritten the rules for people going forward and how you not only deal with the media, but how you can control so much of a conversation. And that's, I'm telling you, moving forward, I'm waiting for somebody on the left. I don't know who that is. That's going to say, you know what, I'm going to do a bit of what Trump does. I'm going to fight hard. I'm not going to apologize for anything. I'm going to do what I do. Because right now I look out there and I don't see anybody that that can do that. Right? I don't see anybody that that can do that. I thought Beto had the chance on stage to be uh, charismatic and to, to woo a crowd. That was before 
he decided to neuter himself and apologize for everything in the history of forever. Speaking of apologies, the Democrats owe, I think, everybody one for yesterday's ginormous <laughs> that was John Dean. It seems to be the objective. You know, here we sit today in this hearing with the ghost of Christmas past because the chairman of the committee has gone to the Speaker of the House and sought permission to open an impeachment inquiry. But she has said no. And so instead of opening the impeachment inquiry into Donald Trump, which is what the chairman wants to do and what I presume a majority of Democrats want to do, we're here reopening the impeachment inquiry potentially into Richard Nixon, sort of playing out our own version of that 70s show. And, and what I really regret it, it is Gene, striking, is Mr. Gates. here as a prop. You it are is. functionally here as a prop because they can't impeach President Trump because 70 percent of Democrats want something that 60 percent of Americans don't. And I don't even think it's 70 percent of Democrats, to be honest with you. I think most of the country doesn't want this. Uh, I think that inside the Democratic Party, you have 60 out of 253, 258 that don't really want any part of this. And you've got a battle going on. So yesterday they, they drag up John Dean, who's gone after Bush and Cheney, who's gone after, uh, you know, here's a guy who was with Nixon, who was an aide with Nixon, who, who, who ended up going to jail because of the Watergate uh, scandal. And this is the person that you brought up there. It was it backfired on them yesterday, as it should, because it was once again a show of how partisan and ridiculous when we're not dealing with issues that need to be dealt with. Right. We're not dealing with any of those things. Instead, we're dealing with what a guy that was in part of the Watergate scandal brought up to the hill to try and draw lines and comparisons to what took place then compared to what took place now, having zero knowledge outside of reading this thing, to say, let me give you my two cents worth. It's, it's, it's nobody wants impeachment. Nobody is. Yes, the far left does. Some people who would like a redo would love that. But the average person, and I talk to a lot of people every day. Nobody ever brings up impeachment. They don't. They'll ask me, what do you think of Trump? But they don't bring up impeachment. And that's why Nancy Pelosi is, is, is staying where she is. When the American public clamors for it, then I think she may try something. But that when isn't here. She was actually talking about Trump earlier today. The president took a different tact. I, I don't think it, <laughs> I, do I, I, with, I'm done with him. I'm, I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> but how do you work? I mean, you have to work with him. How do you work with him after he levels such an insult against you? I just consider the source. <laughs> what, what do you mean by that? Hmm? I mean, you, my stock goes up every time he attacks me. So what, what can I say? You know, the funny thing is, is she can come out, attack him, say, oh, he should be in jail, should do all it, it's 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 again, this this whatever side you're on, that's how you take the attack. Trump deserves to be in jail. Trump should be in prison. Nancy should be in prison. They should all be in prison. Not really. You know what they should all do? They should all actually have to work part time. And have a part time wage. Who's with me? Right, you're there once a month. You need to be there every day. You're there once a month. Maybe you get a special dispensation to to come out twice a month for a week or so, and the rest of you should carry on living your normal lives, having your normal jobs, doing the normal things that you have to do. You fly. It's not that hard. I talk to to congressmen and senators all the time, and there's a lot of not doing nothing. There's a lot of I'm just hanging out, you know. <laughs> I mean, was it, was it, uh, who was it? Was it, uh, was it Obama? <laughs> I think it was in his book. He said, you'd be surprised as president. You'd be surprised that there's a lot of downtime, right? You know, you got everything scheduled to the point and there's a lot of times where you're just kind of sitting around. It's like movie making, right? It's like, hurry up and wait. How cool would that be? They work part time, right? Maybe get like three grand a month and then cover their health care in the whole nine yards. They have to show up like six, eight days a month, and the rest of the time they have to have a normal job and they have to be in their cities, states that they represent. I'm all for that. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Love hearing from you, each and every single one of you. So yesterday, Kevin Durant played basketball. 
because that's his job. He destroyed his leg, uh, pulled his Achilles, which was awful to watch. And it, it, you could see it in super slow mo. You could see the giving of the Achilles. Afterwards, they spoke about it. So here's a team down 3 1, NBA Finals. He hasn't played in a month, plays sparingly in practice, apparently against a few reserves and against some of the coaches, decides he's going to come out and try to give it the old Willis Reed. For those of you who don't know this, that's dating myself, even though I wasn't even around for them. Uh, and come out and play on a bum ankle and injures it. Afterwards, the uh, GM, uh, visibly distraught. Uh, Kevin, had a, it's, it's an Achilles injury. I don't know uh, the extent of it. Yeah, well, it's a tear, and that's going to keep him out at least a year. Watching the game last night, I just want to say, Toronto, you were awful. You were, you, you, your fan base is awful. The cheering for him to be injured, now it wasn't everybody, but it was enough. It was awful to watch. You never cheer for somebody to get injured. You don't cheer. It wasn't like he got two technicals and you cheer him because he's out of the game. No, he tore his Achilles. And you cheered him. Shame on you, Canada, for being so socially forward-thinking. It's a reason you guys haven't won hockey for a while. I'm just saying. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Please feel free to tweet at me. Summer is here, right? You're six months into your New Year's resolutions, which was paying down your debt. And guess what? You've not done any of it like you thought you were. Credit cards are still the same place. You're paying, on average, 19% APR. What? Stop it. Lightstream is here to help. Credit card consolidation loans from Lightstream as low as 5.95% APR with auto pay. That will save you thousands of dollars. What are you doing? Got decent credit? Got some credit cards? You're looking around saying, I want to pay this stuff off. I want to start saving some money. That's where Lightstream comes in. And here's the other thing. For my listeners, that's you guys out there. How about a special interest rate discount? Yeah, a special interest rate discount. Do you know you can even get your money as early as the same day you apply? That's how amazing Lightstream is. Check them out at lightstream.com slash Benson, L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash Benson. Subject to credit approval. Rate includes 0.50% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply. Offer is subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash Benson for more information. At Chad Benson Show, Twitter, C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N, Chad Benson Show. Serving up talk radio, medium rare, and dripping with irony. It's Chad Benson. Mexico is doing a great job at the border, really helping us. We want the Democrats to help us as much as Mexico, and we'll have absolutely no problem at the border. We'll clean it up very quickly. Clean it up quickly. Clean it up very quickly. He's wandering around with the agreement in his hand. It's actually kind of, uh, it's kind of funny. That's the agreement that everybody says they don't have, so... No, because I'm going to let Mexico do the announcement at the right time. There you go. What is it? How big is the agreement? This is one page of a very long and very good agreement for both Mexico and the United States. It's one page. It's a simple agreement. That's all I'm doing here is simple agreements. We're just putting stuff down on one page and we're going from there. What do you think of apples that are those apples? Oh, yeah. Simple agreement. Very simple. I still want to see what the thing is that he's got that Mexico's like, we don't. Like, what are you talking about? It's like, there's something else that we did. Was there? Is there something written in Invisible Ink that we don't know about? <laughs> I feel like we should know something. No, it's, you know, it's in there. No, no, mm-hmm. no, 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 no. We'll see. Maybe he's got something. Maybe Mexico's playing the game. Maybe they're not. We'll see. But he got some sort of agreement. Now, in the end, what does it look like? And by that, I don't mean the agreement. Does Mexico keep up their end of the bargain, secure their border, stop people coming in, and the people that do get in, allow them to stay there and apply for amnesty there? And how do we go and enforce everything and adjudicate these things in a timely fashion? How does that look? I think it's a fair question to ask. Because all of the great planning in the world means absolutely nothing. You have to see it in in, in actual working order 
before you realize it works. Mike Tyson used to say it all the time. Everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Then what happens? Your plan goes out the window. Sometimes you keep to a plan, and other times you're like, you panic. And for us, we seem to have a lot of great plans, but we don't always follow through on those, and we don't always enforce those. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Jobs, 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 jobs. U.S. employers hired a record number of people in April. The Labor Department says the 5.9 million hires that month was the most since records began in December of 2000, and it's evidence that the job market remains solid. There are warning signs, though. The number of job openings declined from 7.6 million in November to 7.4 million in April, which suggests demand for labor is beginning to soften. Yeah, that's true, probably. I mean, you know, and we, we're at the point where we got somewhat full employment. Uh, the market, the marketplace itself and the economy itself is still strong. There are indicators out there that there could be something coming, right? Doesn't mean it's going to happen. I've been on airplanes where it seems like it's smooth and everything and you hear nothing from the pilot and then boom, it is, it is crazy. And then bing. And I've been on airplanes where like, hey, for the next 25 to 30 minutes, we're going to run into some rough patch of air and you get nothing. So there's some indicators out there. But by and large, the economy's still strong. And in the end, that is going to be the biggest indicator for Trump on whether or not he gets a second term for president. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Four-day work week. Yes, no, maybe. And why are we so afraid of breastfeeding? Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. You vote for this guy who's going to be the little man's champion. He gives all the money to the rich people. You you have this idea that your your path to the American dream is is blocked by immigrants and single mothers on food stamps. That's who has all the money. And that he was going to beat people up that you don't like. Right. I mean, he is a blustery guy. I mean, I, I've always said this. People vote not on issues, especially anymore. They vote on weakness or strength, what they perceive it. Well, I don't know about that. But the weakness or strength thing is very real. Right? If you have a politician that's good looking, right? So you have Gavin Newsom, for example, who is looks like Christian Bale. He's the governor of California, California, standing up next to somebody who is five foot nothing, right? Maybe overweight, little disheveled looking, right? Or Bernie Sanders, for example. People are going to look to somebody like Gavin Newsom as that guy, he's, he's got it going on, right? He's got it going on. He could be a buffoon. But the thought process is he's stronger. Who am I following out of a building? Am I following that guy out of a building or am I following that guy out of a building? And yeah, you know what? He does that. And I've been trying to explain this to, to, to my friends who are progressive and who are on the left. They'll ask me, why do people vote against their best interest? Why do people vote, you know, for Trump when they see all these things they can't stand? You know, they, they, they themselves can't stand it. And I say the biggest thing is, and you guys got to understand this. If you want to beat him, you better understand it. He feels like their equalizer, right? He's their Denzel Washington. Great movie. He's getting equal. It's not about the, well, do the, do the rich make more money? This, that. They, you know what? The average person doesn't sit around all day going, ah, the rich people. You know, they, they make that a big photo op. But the reality is, and a big talking point, uh, he gives them voice. He looks at the people who they already think look down at them. Right. 
that middle country, slower life. You don't have a museum. There isn't a play every night, you know, in your in your town. Right? He looks at them and says, I got your back. And he'll go look at those other people and say, you guys suck. You treat them like crap. They know that you're elitist. You look down upon them. He's their great equalizer. He is. And he understands that. As long as Donald Trump is president, I am down the line, Democrat. But you go uh, after them. But I, I think exactly. Your I go after them right. because they need going after. They need some tough love. And I'm not going to stop. But yes, their stuff is raggedy, too. They have some things they have to answer for. And they don't help themselves mm. a lot. And I think a lot of this um, far left political correctness is a cancer on progressivism. Yeah. Another thing they love about Trump. He doesn't care. He doesn't. He just, he's going to say it. That's why I said earlier, where's the person on the left that also doesn't care? I mean, my God, everybody got excited about Beto. I thought, Beto, you know what? He's got the charisma that a lot of the other ones don't have. And it started with him apologizing, and it has not stopped with him apologizing. And the more he apologizes, the further he gets away from being relevant. He's at the point now where he's slid off your paper and he's now on the floor. His name has. They want strength. They want somebody who 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 has that look, who has that strength about them, who has that. So look at Kamala Harris. But Kamala Harris right now. I look at Kamala Harris. Whether you like her or not, I look at her and say she could be a damn good, formidable candidate. But she's now apologizing for being great at her job as a prosecutor. Doesn't work. Do you think Trump, if he was a great prosecutor, because you know he'd be the greatest, right? I'll tell you that. Do you think he would apologize for being great? No, he wouldn't. He would not. I think when you when you talk to, to Trump supporters, they are not blind to his myriad flaws. But one thing they always say is he's not politically correct. I don't think you can... Uh, underestimate overestimate how much people have been choking on political correctness and hate it there were two studies about this recently it was in the new york times front page story a few months ago it was also in the atlantic about a year ago the vast majority of liberals in this country hate it they, they think political correctness has gone way too far no one likes to be living on eggshell yeah and it's backfired on them and now with identity politics and all of these kind of things it's not going to help them going forward it isn't and I tell and I tell my friends this all the time. I have a couple of good friends who are super progressive. Cannot stand Trump. By the way, they don't think Trump should be impeached either. Uh, they couldn't stand Hillary. But they, I tell them all the time, the difference between Trump and other people is he plays to win. He plays to win. He's going to leave everything out there. He plays to win. They're playing not to lose. And not to, 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 to hurt anybody's feelings and not to leave any group behind. You can't win that way. Try to make everybody happy. You'll find out you make nobody happy. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. Love hearing from you. So I found this to be interesting. So a woman, right? Because this would be a woman thing. Well, I don't Is it really a woman thing anymore? I don't even know if it's a woman thing anymore. Is that the right thing to say? Maybe not. She gets kicked out of a public pool for what? It's not the kind of police body cam video that often makes the news. I have a right to feed my baby. They feed him in church. <laughs> when Misty Dojero's 10-month-old son got hungry, she decided to nurse him. That's when a manager of the pool approached. She said, you need to cover up or leave. After the police were called, she did leave. Word spread and other nursing mothers showed up at that city pool. We all just kind of got together and decided to go for it. The protest apparently worked. Texas city officials, realizing that state law allows women to breastfeed wherever they need to, have apologized to Misty Dojero. Yeah, as they should. What is this weirdness of people who breastfeed, right? What, 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 what are you afraid of that's going to happen? What exactly is going to take place? That you're going to see somebody's breast? Oh, my God, there's a boob that your child's going to see somebody's breast? I'm just trying to figure out what about this scares people? Because we hear about this all the time. 
we hear about this so much that 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 oh you shoot there's times and places no nah, come on come on it's the most natural thing in the world she didn't take off all of her clothes and slap uh you know a 22 year old like, come on it's a child what exactly are you afraid of it's like the whole thing i still look back on nipplegate with you know janet jackson and Justin Timberlake, and the insanity of the way that we were for the co- for the few weeks afterwards, as if something, somebody saw something that was going to destroy their world. She gave me the ultimatum, and I said, well, you show me your policy where it says that I need to cover up, and I'll leave. And, um, and she, you know, was telling me that it was, you know, not right that I needed to cover up. It's her policy. But that's not the, 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 what it says in Texas is essentially if if the mother has a right to be there. So if you have a right to be there, it's a public place, whatever it is, you have a right to be there. You're allowed to feed your child. Right. She covered up. She, you know, you, normally when I see I've seen women that are breastfeeding, what do they do? They have a towel over them. They have something like that. It's just we lose our mind with like, oh, my God, there's a boob. What is wrong with you? What do you think's going to happen? I'm just curious. You think your child's going to see something? You're going to. Here's the problem: is you think your child's going to see something, and then you're going to have to have a conversation with your child and explain to them things. Is that it? Good God! Just this fear of. Well, did you know that uh, there's a, there's a boob over there? What? What? I've been on airplanes. I've been all over the place, and I see people how uncomfortable they get, and I just laugh, and I'm like, so weird. Right? I mean, it's weird because I'm breastfeeding somebody. But still, Chad, you're so weird. It's just a, it's just an odd thing that we have this, you know, weird kind of fascination and, and, and freak outness over a little bit of nudity. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Four-day work week. Who's, uh, who's up for it? It may sound outlandish, but the idea of a four-day work week is gaining ground in many rich countries. Take the UK, where work hours have been creeping up in recent years. Here's the head of Britain's National Federation of Unions, Francis O'Grady, at a recent conference. I believe that in this century, we can win a four-day working week with decent pay for everyone. Yeah. You know, if you, are you working 10 hours a day? Is that how that works? I mean, a lot of nurses and, and, and cops and everybody else, they have their three days and four day work weeks. Uh, but they're talking about everybody, the four day work week. John Maynard Keynes predicted that technology would make us so efficient, his grandchildren's generation would only clock in 15 hours a week. That was clearly an overshot. But the British economist Robert Skidelsky told Bloomberg that judging by historical trends, People should be working an average of 33 hours per week today. 2014 Gallup poll showed full-time workers in the U.S. work even more hours each week. Yeah. Yeah, we're working a lot. And we're taking, by the way, very little vacation. Like, very little vacation comparatively to the rest of the globe. Like, Spain has 40, pretty much 40 days off a year. You get 40 days off a year. On average, I think in the European Union, you have to have 20 days off. That doesn't include holidays. Those are just paid vacation days, according to the European Union. We're working longer and harder, right? And we don't, and here's the other thing, though. And it was very interesting. I was watching this uh, story on, I think it was Yahoo Finance, and this guy's like, look, I worked at a place where we had unlimited vacation. So you could take vacation whenever you want. And he's like, I took less vacation that year than I've ever taken in my life. And a lot of us don't take vacation because we have the fear that we're not going to be needed. Our job's going to be given away. What am I? I'm going to come back to a giant mess. Uh, a lot of things play into that, right? We don't. We, and and that's just us, right? Because we we you know we look at everything as a competition. Is there somebody in this office, right? That's going to be better than me? Is there somebody in this office? Or, or I've got them believing that I'm an integral part of work, and if I leave. They're going to find out that the wheel still moves and it goes round and round and they're not going to need me. And there's a lot to that. And some people, they just don't take it and they save up their vacation and they're in positions where they're allowed to keep that money at the end of the year. Not all places, but some. The New Zealand-based estate management company, Perpetual Guardian, piloted four-day work weeks last year. Employees had to adjust. They shortened meetings. To increase efficiency, they had to cut back on 
browsing the internet. The company claimed that workers were as productive in four days as they used to be in five, and they were more engaged and less stressed. Yeah, oh, I believe that to be true. Because if you think about how much work, so here's me, how many of you are sitting here today? You're listening to me, whatever it is. You're going to meetings that you don't need to be in. You are doing things throughout the day that you know, okay, I'm going to get this done, and I'm going to have X amount of time for all intents and purposes that are going to be free. I'm going to be hunting for other things to do that may not even be my things to do, but I can get this done in five hours, but they're going to make me stay here eight hours. A lot of it is, that's the reality. It doesn't work everywhere, right? It doesn't work everywhere. But I'm always open for it. I always, you know what, I if, and that's going to be the big thing going forward is, and, and this is some of the things that are unwritten rules in in the world that of, of how we're, when you're going now, a company may say, hey, we can't afford you to pay you more money than you want hourly right now. But what we can do is we can offer you off every other Friday. We can give you a half day, you know, on, on what we can do some things like that. And that's what people are going to be doing. And that's the way to negotiating. It's it's more quality at times and even quantity of pay. Three, two, three, five, three, eight, 24, 23 at Chad Benson show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. My pillow. Speaking of quality, speaking of quality, quality night's sleep. You need it. You're going to get it. My pillow, kids, it is incredible. I've had mine for over two years now, and I put it to the test. I didn't think it was going to be all that it was cracked up to be, and I was surprised at how amazing it was. I sleep sounder. I get between, you know, about five and a half hours and a six and a half hours of sleep, and I get my naps in on the weekend. And what I notice comparatively is not only do I sleep, but I sleep sound, and it's incredible. It really is. And they're doing something for my listeners who's never done before. Lowest price ever. Two premium pillows. Less than 70 bucks. Thirty four ninety nine per pillow. Free shipping. Right? 100% machine washable, dryable, made in the USA, 10-year warranty. But they're also giving you a 60-day money-back guarantee. 60-day money-back guarantee. Lowest price ever offered to my listeners. Only available at MyPillow.com. Promo code Benson. Two premium pillows. Sixty nine ninety eight. Go to MyPillow.com, MyPillow.com, promo code Benson, or call 800-983-4975. Use the promo code Benson. It's the Chad Benson Show. Warning, no snowflake zone. Uninformed opinions are in danger of melting. The Chad Benson Show. 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 Amazon has overtaken Google and Apple to become the world's most valuable brand at $315.5 billion, up 52% from last year. The research agency Cantor ranks Apple at second, valued at $309.5 billion, and Google in third place at $309 billion. Industry watchers credit Amazon's expansion beyond retail and into pharmacies, food delivery, and electric vehicles with its jump to the top. Oh, not a shocker. And they're going to the moon, kids. They're going to the moon. So get ready for the moon. Trump in Iowa doing what Trump does today, going after Biden, uh, insulting him. Joe Biden thought that China was not a competitor of ours. Joe Biden is a dummy. Joe Biden thought China was not a competitor. Yeah, we heard that the first time. (laughs) You have to repeat yourself. I'm totally... I'm good. I'm good. You're, you're talking at a pace that's good. I understand uh, English pretty pretty well. I got a good grasp on it. You don't need to explain it twice. Maybe you have to slow it down for other people, but I'm okay. Although I will say this, right? Biden's kid. There's some more than more than a few answers that need to uh, more questions that need to be asked about his kid and his relationship with China and the Ukraine and a few different things there, right? Where he's like, all right, check it out. I have no idea how to run a hedge fund, but China just gave me a billion and a half dollars. What? <laughs> it's like, okay. But it'll be interesting because they're having dueling dueling rallies in Iowa today. And then, of course, we're going to have to hear about whose crowd was bigger. When a man has to mention my name 76 times in a speech, that means he's in trouble. Yeah. I don't know if he's in trouble, right? His biggest trouble right now, and Trump's going after him more than anybody else, 
is going to be the left. Is Biden, I've, I've said Biden's hardest race may be getting out of his own primaries because of where they're going and what the people on the left want. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Check out the old Gram Kids. That's the Instagram. Your useless fact of the day, while we talk about salaries and athletes and stars, the top three highest paid athletes in the world are soccer players. Neymar made $105 million last year. Cristiano Ronaldo, $109 million. And Lionel Messi of Barcelona made $127 million. That includes almost $100 million in salary just for playing the game. Good work if you can get it. Have a good rest of your day. Go have a taco. Night, night, Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.